Hello there, it's another rotten old day out there, so you lucky people are getting another video. Okay, I'm on about uh, CDI ignition systems. Capacitor discharge ignition. Most little engines nowadays, gasoline engines as you call them in the States, um, use uh, CDI systems. They're far more efficient and more reliable than the old point system. Um, but a lot of the old timers get a bit confused. They they equate a thin blue spark at the spark plug as being weak. Um, whereas the old system they often refer refer to a fat spark. Well, there's more energy in this little thin one, but uh, I'll leave that for a, another waffle. Um, I often have people turn up with CDI coils and ask me to test them for them because their chainsaw won't run or their lawnmower won't run or their motorbike won't run or whatever. Anything that uses a small gas engine. And uh, you can check them. You can check them with a multimeter but you need a very accurate one. This is 20,000 ohms per volt but it's not really accurate because we're dealing with such low ohmage. And you have to know what they are and how to interpret the the readings and uh, I find most people who who ask me to test these things that aren't really that au fait with electronics. So what's needed is very very simple 100% go no go HT coil tester and that's what this is. It looks quite flash doesn't it? <laughs> but it's ridiculously simple. I'm going to show you how to make one. Um, I mean, apart from the box and apart from the fact that I've sort of engraved it and made it look a bit flash, um, it's nothing more than three components. Something you can make in an evening very easy. I'm going to show you how to make one. And uh, if you're into uh, servicing uh, small gasoline engines, you'll find this will save you an awful lot of time. Um, and as I say, it's, it's, it's quick and it's cheap. So, what's in it? Well, quite honestly, I'll pay back. Not a lot. <laughs> Mostly air. Three components. Um, a capacitor. There's our capacitor. One microfarad, 400 volt working. This one's made by RS. 30p, maybe. One diode, one mains diode, rectifier, call it what you will, BY126, 127, anything like that, not critical. One resistor, 47k ohms, 3 or 4p at the most. And we need a, probably the most expensive pipe, which I can find one in the box. Oh, here's one. There's a two-pole, two-way switch. Preferably sprung-loaded in one direction. So there's our two poles and there's the two ways they switch to. Um, that might cost you two or three quid, maybe. And then a box where you can make one out of wood, if you wish. I've made hundreds and hundreds of these things and it's really simple. The diode I've simply stuck to the plastic box with some hot melt glue, as is the small resistor. The uh, observant ones of you will see that I'm using two micro switches, single pole, two way, two of them ganged together. And as you can guess, they came out of microwave ovens. <laughs> Where else? Um, and that's it, it's really so simple. And I'll show you how it works and how versatile this can be. Okay, well here we have a little bit of theory. Don't run away. It uh, really is simple, believe me. You can do this. If we assume that's our mains coming in from there. This thing runs from the mains, by the way. And our diode 
is there, that represents our diode. The bar is the cathode end, you'll see on your diode. If I can have a look, it'll have a little ring there. That's that end. So you get it the right way around. But not critical. Then it goes on from the diode to our resistor, which is 47k. Okay, or well, thereabouts. Um, it's not critical. And our mains comes in here, our AC mains. And here's one switch. There's the other switch. And that goes to output. Or to the terminals on the little box. And then between these two points is our capacitor. And all we do, if you can imagine that little piece there as a switch, is we throw the switch, these are both ganged together, remember? We throw the switch so that the capacitor charges up, AC comes in, gets changed to DC, gets slightly dropped through the resistor, and the capacitor charges up. And when we let the switch go, or throw it in the opposite direction, the capacitor, now charged up, goes across the output. So this little switch now switches to there. So this capacitor now discharges through the output. And the output we put on the primary of the CDI coil. And this will cause the spark plug to flash once. I told you it's simple. Okay then, if you're still with me, <laughs> well done. Um, it runs from the main, so we'll plug it in. I've got a, a one amp fuse in there. It uses no electricity at all. Uh, so we now switched on. Um, now what can I find? Aha! Found it. Here I have a little neon, just to demonstrate. You don't need one of these, but this is just simply to uh, demonstrate the device. A neon is nothing more than a little glass envelope with two little wires in and as the name says it's got neon gas inside and anything over about oh I don't know 80 90 volts and the the gas will glow so we put our neon across the output so we put that one in that connection and that one in where's the hole gone yeah that one there you go right we switched on if I push the if I that's it it's Get that, that's better. If I get the, um, the light right, you should see this. When I push the switch, the capacitor is charged up. When I let go of the switch, the little neon momentarily glowed as I let it go, as the capacitor discharged. So every time I push the switch, and of course your engine runs at thousands of times per minute. I can't go that fast. But uh, that's the pulses that goes to the, the primary of your coil. Now all I've got to do is find a coil somewhere. Bear with me. Okay, well, an hour and a half later, I've... Very sorry, I've hunted all through my workshop. Do you think I can find a, an old CDI coil to, to uh, finish this demonstration? Can I, heck? That's... Uh, that's marvellous. Never mind. Um, I'll simply describe the, the CDI coil you wish to test, assuming I had one. The primary is connected to the primary, and the secondary of the coil, of course, goes to the spark plug and earth. It's nothing more than a transformer, after all. I'm throwing the switch backwards and forwards. If I had one, you'd see that the spark plug would uh, spark in, in time with me throwing the switch. And that's all this tester does. So if we've got a spark at the spark plug, and our engine won't run, it's not an ignition problem, is it? It's something else. Anyway, sorry about that. I hope I've made this uh, clear. 
I'm now going to put another log on the fire. Well, I've just been told the kettle's on, so I'm going to pop in and uh, have a cuppa. Thanks for watching. I'll try something different next time.